So here with a new video tutorial. In this video, we are going to cover uh, remote replication with SRDF. This is for Dell DMC Power Max. But first, what is SRDF? Let's switch. The Dell Symmetrix Remote Data Facility is a family of products that offers a range of array-based disaster recovery, parallel processing, and data migration solutions. The SRDF replicates data between two, three, or four arrays located in the same data center or campus, and also it can replicate the data thousands of kilometers away. SRDF disaster recovery solutions use active remote, mirroring, and dependent write logic to create consistent copies of data. Dependent write consistency ensures transactional consistency when the applications are restarted at the remote location. So on this very first overview, we have we are going to have a look on on the hardware. Let's click on SMC credentials for login. Let's wait a couple of seconds here, and let's choose our array 0107. I just click it. Here we have our home dashboard. For seeing the hardware, the ports, the ports that enable the SRTF replication, we have to go to System, then Hardware. And here we are going to have the OR Director's View. What is an OR Director? Uh, let's switch to the presentation. The new OR Director View. Here we are going to concentrate on the new OR directors. This is the new naming convention of OR, which means OS stand, sorry, OS host and RTF. So two ports are online with the status sun, meaning that they are capable and available for use. So for the OS host and RTF, here we have the new view. Let's switch back. And here we can see that the port OR1C uh, let's select it. It's online status on, and here we can see the, the speed, which is 32 gigabit per second, and it's available for FC through RDF. If we scroll down a little bit, here we are going to see the 2C6 with same information. So let's go back to the dashboard. As you know, in the dashboard view, here we have uh, five main main views. The system health, the SG compliance, capacity, performance, and protection. Let's select protection. And here we have the topology of the laboratory. So in this lab, uh, in this exercise, we are going to work uh, between 0107 array and 647 array. So now we are going to create a SRDF group. Let's click on SRDF group, create SRDF group. And remote array is going to be, as I mentioned before, 647. The SRDF group level is going to be demo test two. Let's click on next. For configuring the SRDF in, the, in our local array, we have to choose the, the previous ports that I just mentioned. OR1C6 2C6 Now the next configuration is for the remote array and we have to choose the remote ports in this case it's going to be 1F7, 2F7 Then click on next and here we have a summary here we can see that the local array is the 0107 0107 and the remote array is 647. Here we have the port information. Everything is looking really good. Click on run. Here we, we can see that the task is in progress. Let's wait a couple of seconds here. It just succeeded. Refresh is completed. Click on OK. So for seeing the, the SRDF groups, we have to expand data protection menu, then SRDF groups. 
and here we can see our newly created SRTF group called demo test 2. I previously created this one but it was not covered. All right, let's go back to dashboard view for the next lesson. In this lesson we are going to protect a storage group. For doing this we have to go to storage, then a storage group, and find the storage group that we are going to protect with SRTF. So I am going to find it here, the name of this data store group, sorry, the, this storage group is VM data stores. It is here, let's select it. And then click on protect. Here we have to choose set up a remote replication using SRTF. Click on next. Uh, the remote array is going to be the 647. Replication mode can leave it, we can leave it as adaptive copy. SRTF group can be assigned automatic. Um, the name in the remotes uh, in the remote site is going to be VM data stores. So let's click on next. This is the summary of the action. Click on run now. Let's wait a couple of seconds. It just succeeded. Click on OK. So here we are in the 0107 um, array. And if we scroll down a little bit, here we can see that SRTF. It's yes. Let's click on it. And here we, here we can see that the SRTF group number is the number 3. If the mode is adaptive copy as we select before, the status is synchronized and SRTF type here in this uh, in this array is R R1, which means it's local. So now I want to show you an online increase for an SRTF, sorry, for a storage group in part of SRTF. So this is really easy. Let's select the storage group. Now click on modify. Here we can see uh, before I proceed with the uh, with the extra provisioning that the capacity is uh, 2048 gigabyte. So when I click on modify, I am going to double this capacity. So there are, currently there are eight volumes each of 256, and we are increasing. We are doubling this to uh, 512. So here we can see that the total capacity will be. Uh, 4096 gigabytes. Let's click on run now. So, as this uh, the Unisquid has detected this storage group part of SRTF, so it will take us to these expand remote volumes. Here we have to choose the, uh, the number group, which is 3, and click on apply. Alright, it completed. Let's click on OK. Here we can see that the capacity has been increased from 2000 to 4000. And I want to show you that the remote site, the remote storage group, also has been expanded. So let's select here our array 647. And let's find it here. Here it is. And here you can see that the capacity has been increased also to 4096 gigabytes. Good. Let's go back to dashboard uh, and switch back to the 0107.
All right, for the next activity, we are going to perform a failover. What is a failover? Let's switch to the presentation. Failing over to a remote site. A failover operation assumes a primary site failure and allow write access to the secondary R2 volumes from a recovery or DR host. So this is a super easy um, scenario when we are not able to access in the primary site we can perform a failover and all writes will be available in the R2 volumes. So here we are. Now we have to choose uh, the storage group. And find our VM data stores. I just selected. And let's go to the SRTF tab. Click on yes. And here we are. Here we can see that the status is synchronized, type R1. Let's select it. And now let's click on the three dots and fail over. So this is uh, the failover wizard. Let's just click on run now. Task is in progress. Refresh is completed. Let's click on OK. And now we are going to see the status as failover. So now all uh, the R2 volume, the one in array 647, is able to perform reads and writes. Uh, when it's synchronized, it's only uh, it's not at all allowing this operation. But in a uh, in a failover operation, uh, we are assuming that uh, R1 site is not is not working properly, and all the writes will be uh, flowing through the R2. Once we are done with this uh, with our disaster recovery exercise or with the uh, with whatever it's the scenario that perform the failover, we can fail back and return to normal operation. This is super easy. Let's click again on the three dots and click on fail back. And this is the fail back uh, wizard. Just click on run now. Let's wait a couple of seconds. All right, it completed. So let's click on OK. And now we are going to see our normal operations that status is synchronized and everything is flowing from our primary array uh, 0107 to remote array 0647. Let's go back to dashboard. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to cover SRTF Metro. What is SRTF Metro? SRTF Metro significantly changes the traditional behavior with respect to the R2 device availability, availability to better support host applications in high availability environments. With SRTF Metro, the SRTF R2 device is also read and write accessible the host and will take you on for the federated personality of the primary R1 device. So this is called geometry device, uh, WWN and so on. So by providing this federated personality on the R2 device, both R1 and R2 devices can appear as a single virtual device across the two SRDF pair arrays of four host presentation, allowing for both R1 and R2 devices being accessible in active state. So in this, in this lesson, we are going to create um, a new SRDF Metro configuration. So let's go back to the lab. Now let's go to storage groups. And in this lesson, we are going to protect an, an storage group called test database. So let's find that. 
this here, let's select it and then protect. Now we have to choose uh, set up high availability using SRGF Metro. Click on next. We have to select uh, the remote array 0647. The SRDF group can be automatically assigned. Establish SRDF first and for the witness, uh, for the protected, we are going to choose the witness. It is there. Now let's click on next and run. Let's wait a couple of seconds again. It just completed. Click on OK. All right, so here we have the SRDF uh, tab. Let's click on Yes for more details. It's loading. And now I want you to see this difference. So in previous exercise, we, we saw the status was synchronized, but now status is active active. This means that this status group is out is available from both sides, from array 0107 and from array 0647. Uh, now, the final exercise, let's go back to the test database storage group. The final exercise is to perform uh, a device addition to the storage group. So let's click on modify. So in whatever is the scenario, probably you may need to add more devices, more storage devices. So how do you, how you are going to ensure that everything is accessible uh, via both sides. So this is super easy to cover. Let's click on modify the storage group. And instead of eight volumes, we are going to have 10 volumes. So we are adding uh, two extra volumes here. And now here we have a warning. This is a, an important feature of the Unis3 that has this this warning. Uh, let me go back for a second. So when I put the mouse here, it says adding volume to an SRTF storage group without pairing the new volume with the remote storage group, will re uh, it will result in an unprotected and unmanageable SRTF storage group. So when I click on the warning, I am going to be able to provide um, the same information to the uh, to the secondary. Uh, array. So I have to select the array and then the storage group that's going to have uh, the new devices also. Let's click on apply and then click on run now. So you saw that the uh, the warning got changed from yellow to a uh, green mark. Though. So this is ensuring that uh, both, both sides of this SRDF metro is going to be uh, it's going to be expanded with these new two volumes. So the tax is in progress and now succeeded. So here we can see the new 10 volumes. Thanks for watching this lesson.